Every year we curate the list of the world's 100 most powerful women by looking at the leaders across business, politics, philanthropy, investing, and more. Ultimately, women are ranked according to their money, so either assets under management, revenue, or if a leader of a country, GDP. We look at media mentions to determine scope of influence. We look at population for heads of states and employee count for anyone who runs a company. And then we always add a momentum multiplier, which is basically the subjective element of power, right? Because at the end of the day, what is powerful? So we try to capture that subjectivity by looking, especially this year, at each woman's impact on what has been a very challenging year. So if a head of state, how did they handle COVID? What were the measures that they implemented and what is the mortality and infection rate in their country? As well as what was the global reaction to how they handled COVID? Jacinda Ardern, the New Zealand Prime Minister, because of her capable handling of COVID, jumped six spots on this year's power list to number 32. New Zealand had a first and second wave of COVID, like most places, but unlike most places, she succeeded in shutting the country down and stopping the spread and effectively ending both waves of COVID, which is not something that we've seen around the world. If you are the head of a company, you know, what did you do for your employees this year? How did you help society at large? We had women like Donna Langley. She's the chairwoman of Universal. And she's number 53 on this year's list. And she pivoted to premium on demand in the spring. Obviously, movie theaters were shut down. The shift to premium on demand and the ability to stream new releases at home was a crucial component to staying sane through 2020. So I kind of started joking that the women on the list kept us sane and kept us sanitized in the case of Clorox CEO, Linda Rendell. We put Stacey Abrams at number 100. She is a voting rights advocate. She's known for having run for governor of Georgia and losing by about 55,000 votes. And there were allegations of racially motivated voter suppression in that state at that time. So she has since dedicated the last two years of her life promoting free and fair elections. Crucially, she helped register and helped is key. You know, she's not the only one doing this work, but she's emblematic of so many women and black women who are doing this work. But they registered 800,000 Georgians to vote and are credited with the reason that Georgia turned blue for the first time since 1992. Continuing with the American political theme, obviously we have Kamala Harris, our vice president-elect. She is number three on this year's list. She was already a historic nominee on the ticket, but when the election results finally came in, it was pretty clear to us like, oh, she's going to be pretty high on this year's list. And it's hard to deny her power this year. Another really interesting woman on this year's list at number 63 is the governor of Tokyo, Yuriko Koike. And she is the first woman to hold this position of power. And in July of 2020, she was reelected with 60% of the vote, which is considered a landslide. And a lot of what propelled her to victory was her very capable handling of the coronavirus pandemic. She was vigilant about consumer health information and supporting small businesses. So that gained her a lot of popularity with the citizens of Tokyo. And then she's one to watch for not just 2021, but beyond. Her name is one that has come up as potential prime minister of Japan. And she, if elected, would be the first female prime minister of the country. So stay tuned there. Thank you.